progressive web app with single page application. So in this section, I'm going to take a look at four important and major front end frameworks, and we're going to actually convert them to a PWA. First, we're going to talk about Angular app, and then we're going to talk about React. Then we're going to talk about Vue.js. And then at the end of the section, we're going to talk about Ember.js and we will convert them to PWA. We're going to actually build a single page application with these frameworks and then we convert them to a PWA. PWA in an Angular app. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at how we can actually convert or build a new Angular app with Angular CLI and convert it to a PWA. So let's jump into our project. I've built a very simple project. What you can do here, well, you can actually, first of all, install globally Angular CLI from Angular module package slash CLI. You're going to have ng dash dash version. You see that you will have a version. You see that you will have Angular version, Angular CLI version 1.7 which is what we need. Uh, you need to actually install Angular CLI above 1.6 in order to actually convert your Angular app to a PWA, progressive web app. First of all, you can actually create a new project like ng new and name of your project, like whatever. And if you pass dash dash flag and dash dash service dash worker, then actually we're going to have a new project with angular service worker module and the configuration file as well as set angular service worker enable in our build pipeline but we actually don't want to do this we want to convert our angular app the way that actually and cli is going to create that for automatically for us we're going to do it ourselves and do what we can do and let's see you know to understand more so first of all, let's see our project. I'm going to go ahead and say here, I'm going to go ahead and say here npm start. And then you see that my project is going to start. I'm going to just show you to see what I have built. Basically what I've done here is same simple project. I included uh, phones and bootstrap here from CDN to show you how we can cache this with Angular CLI. And also we have three component, our main component, and we have a very simple routing system to route home page and about so if i go back to my browser and open okay local host port for okay then you see this is the project we're going to convert this to a cli app to let's if i just open up my console here you see that there is no service worker no manifest nothing and it doesn't work offline so let's go back. Uh, I stopped the project. So first of all, what we need to do here, uh, we need to first of all install service worker module from Angular package, which is at sign Angular slash service dash worker. We need to install this first. And then we need to also do something else like we have to go to angular.cla.json file you need to find app and this is an array with an object and in this object you have to add another property and in this property is service worker and you need to basically enable service worker added to true now cli is going to create whatever you need for service worker we have installed our service worker module. We need to go ahead and go to our app module. And basically we need to import service worker module and register our service worker. This is something that you need to follow Angular patterns. What you need to do here in service market, there is a register method here in import modules. You have to basically register your service worker which is ng.sw.serviceworker.json you don't have to change this this is something that is coming from angular itself and basically enable tells that if it's production only just register service worker what does that mean that means that angular cli doesn't support development 
environment at the moment another way that you can register actually this file is I can just uh, one way is this another way is you can go to main.ts where you are bootstrapping your module and you know that this the returns a promise and in this promise you, what you can do here basically you can register your service worker as soon as your angular is bootstrapped so let's see that what you can do here first of all you need to check if it's available on navigator and then you have to register your file you can do whatever you want here as well so what we need to also do here we need to create our manifest.json and then we need to go to our cli here and in our asset under the cli.json we have to say we have another file manifest.json which we you have to copy that to this folder for me after build so here in the source file i'm going to create manifest.json and then basically this manifest.json is similar to what we have worked with uh, that in our course so this is all the file all the icons whatever we have name and that's good nothing else we need to also reference this in our index.html basically this is a single page application but we only have one in the html file so i need to reference this here and that's enough we can actually move ahead and improve our application what we can do here in this index file, we can add all of those metas which we enhance which those metas enhanced our application for progressive web app in different devices we can add them here like all of the icons all of the meta tags if you don't know what they are if you forget you just need to go back to the videos in section 2 and review those videos so another thing that we have to do here we are good with index file i'm going to close this we are actually good with our module app module i'm going to close this i'm going to also close my manifest.json and also here where we are registering that's good for me right now i'm going to close this so i don't need uh, the cli as well we are good right now but we are lacking something what we need here is a configuration file for our service worker and cli to understand what we need basically you have to create ng sw-config.json and in this file you can define all of your service worker configuration let's just take a look at what we can do here first of all there is this is an object this is a json file and then you can say what is your index file which is if it's different for your application just define it here the app data property you can define your name and description for this property and then you have two more important property here one is asset groups for all of our static asset and another one is for our dynamic or data which is coming from our api or any third party api here so these two are an array which they accept up an array of objects so let's see what we can do for our static asset for instance let's say we have our normal application which we want to pre-cache some of the data so we can say this is an object the name is app this is the name of our could be the name of our cache you know and then here we say this is a prefetch we want to actually prefetch all of these assets and this version file means all of those css and javascript file which cli is going to generate for us and they have a hash on their name so basically we can save those files here so if you have more in your asset file or your folder just reference them here and also this is not enough because we need more what we need here we also need to kind of assets on runtime or let's say dynamically in this case there is another object here which we can say the mode is lazy and that means it's gonna be on runtime and it doesn't it doesn't need to be actually like immediately so or 
pre-installed those assets, pre-cached those assets. So here in resources, I define my files and this is all of the patterns that I want to lazily cache them. But this is not enough because we have fonts and we have external probably CSS. What we can do here, we can go ahead and define another object, name that like phone. And in this resource, we need to define our URLs and these URLs actually are an array of a string with a pattern here, which basically I'm saying whatever, you know, data is coming from this and this has a prefix for that or this, go and fetch the data and cache it in this name. I also have external library from CDN, for instance, here I can define it something like this, similar to that but I can go ahead and define it here. So what about the dynamic data? I don't have a dynamic data right now from API, but basically if you have any API or anything that you need to cache uh, as soon as they are fetched, so what you have to do here, you can have two strategy for that. The first strategy is freshness and the second one is performance and the rest of you know properties are similar basically you have to say what is the urls which you want to cache and this is the cache config here the properties name are kind of self-explanatory so the strategy the difference is that the freshness is basically and a strategy with cache fallback which it go to network and then fall back to cache and performance means it's cache first and then network but with these configuration here like maximum age or all of these you know things that you need for caching so this is all of our you know configuration so let's build our application i said that we can actually run it in production or in development we need to actually build and then run our application what we need to do here you need to go ahead and say npm run build and then we wait for build to be to this application and getting built by CLI. All right, we build the application. If I go to disk folder right now, you see that I have all of my asset icons, whatever I put in my asset folder. I have my manifest.json, the service worker file, which is coming from the service worker Angular CLI and service worker module and this is the configuration which we added and also they are going to add all of these things that we need to get cached you see that all of them are here and it's very nice and you know convenient so let's go and run this in production so we build that so i actually created one script for you for convenience so you just go ahead and say sw serve and then it's going to actually serve it on port 96 so i'm going to run npm run sw serve so run and then you can go back here you can say localhost and 1996 then we have our application see this is our application right i can go to home go back if i go to application mode you see i have service worker registered i have my manifest and i have all of these files and cache things here so this is nice right so we cached everything if i go to network and if i refresh you see that all of these assets right now are coming from service worker which means if i right now make it offline my application and refresh Yoo it's working it's working and it is nice you see that i have all of these assets from cache and then application is working fully offline Yoo this is nice 